Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I make my fursuit bases. I start by putting on the bucket head base and marking where my eyes and nose are, which gives me a general idea of where ventilation and vision are going to be. I forgot to preface this video by saying this is not a specific base tutorial. I'm basically teaching you how to make a base in general. You can change any of the things you want. I'm just giving you the layout of how I make my bases. So as you can see here, I'm drawing out what I want the shape of the base to look like. This is going to be a feline base for a customer. So I'm giving the base the feline shape that I want it to look like obviously keeping in mind that it's going to look like the character's ref sheet. I like to start my bases by doing the muzzle so I can establish where the ventilation is going to be. And frankly, I just love shaping muzzles. It's one of my favorite parts of fursuit building. I am obsessed with symmetry, so what you'll see me do a lot is once I cut one of the pieces out, I'll take that piece and line it up with the next piece and cut along the lines of the piece that's already cut, if that made any sense, and uh, that's how I get most of my bases to turn out symmetrical. <laughs> So once I've gotten the basic muzzle block, I'll go ahead and mark out where the inside of the mouth is going to be and the nose. Not just the fursuit nose, but the actual nose of the person so the foam isn't pushing up against their nose. So later on you'll see me cutting the triangle part so the person's nose isn't going to be right up against the muzzle. One of the most important things in fursuit making is cutting corners so that your fursuit bases can be smooth. I get a lot of my fursuit bases smooth because I just spend hours cutting corners. As you see here, I like to cut at sort of an angle and round out the corners. A lot of beginning makers make the mistake of not fully getting rid of their sharp corners, so it's very important to spend that extra time just going slow and making sure to get all of those little corners popping out. Some fursuits do have that style to where it's sort of like sharp looking, but even then it's still very smooth how they do it. So just play around with it and see what you like best. Personally, for my suits, I like them to be very rounded and smooth and very cute. As I mentioned in the notes before, if you read the notes, that um, uh, I usually use two inch foam, but I didn't have any on me at the time. So I used three inch foam for the muzzle this time and just took off an inch. After you get the initial muzzle shape, this is where you take your one inch foam and this is where the shape of the muzzle kind of defines what animal it's going to be. I 
mentioned this before, but I'll say it again. This is how I get my symmetry. I'll just take one of the pieces, put them right on top of the other piece, and cut along the other piece just so they'll be symmetrical. Here I am again rounding those corners. Um, just make sure that when you're doing your bases that you're very patient. 90% of my time is devoted to just shaping and sitting there for several hours and minutes just shaping. <music> Once the muzzle has been applied, then you can add your cheek shape. Another thing that helps with symmetry is to glue on one piece the same way you do the other piece. So for example, I start by gluing this little section and making sure that sticks. Then before I glue the rest of it, I make sure the other piece is glued on that little section as well. You can make the smile line as big as you'd like. I usually like to keep mine right under the end of the eye. After that, I like to do the eyebrow or eye arch, and usually I just connect those pieces right down the middle, so it's just one big piece, as you'll see. And I like to cut out the back a little bit so the nose can have a little more extra room. First, I'll connect the nose part of the arch, then after that, I'll take some glue and connect the cheek to the bottom of the arch. After that, then I'll connect the rest of the arch to the entire head. Before I put on the next cheek piece, I like to give it just a little bit of an initial cut just so I know how much of the cheek I need for the next part. I do the same thing with the eyebrow arch. I'll take the same cheek template piece that I used for the first part and then kind of work around it to make a new cheek piece. The goal of this is to basically layer your fursuit so it starts looking like the layers of an actual animal and everything comes together when you start cutting it and shaping it. After that, I start making the bottom of the mouth. At the beginning, I usually make it a little longer than the muzzle, just so when I actually cut it down to shape, I can make sure it fits under the muzzle the way that I'd like it.
When you get the shape that you like, you're gonna wanna cut the mouth at the angle of how wide you want it to be open. Most of my mouths have a smile, so I cut the bottom of it at a little bit of an angle so you can have an open smile mouth. I kind of did this part out of my normal order, but I made the eyebrows next, but then went back to the mouth to connect the cheek part to the bottom of the mouth. And then you see me here doing a lot more shaping, which helps the pieces look meshed together rather than just several layers. And as I said before, this is where I take the cheek part and connect it to the mouth. I usually like to do this separately just because it, you know, feels a little better for me, but you could do it however you'd like. So at this point, this is where I take the muzzle and connect it to the cheek. So this is the part where it's kind of optional. After the second layer of foam, the third layer is completely optional on how big you want your cheeks to be and your eyebrows and how everything you want to be shaped. So I usually stop at around the third layer. Depending on what kind of animal you're making, this is where you can put on the nose. Since I'm making a feline, I put a feline nose. Same thing with the nose bridge, you want it to look like the animal that you're trying to make. If I feel like it's necessary, I'll take a half inch piece of foam and cover up the parts that don't transition very well and it just helps give the base a better shape in general. So this is basically your base, and this is where we're going to cut out the eyes and the mouth so, you know, your person can breathe. Now you can take the rest of your balaclava and glue it to the inside. After it's glued, cut out the eyes and the mouth and glue them to the sides, or you can cut them off. me do this before in some other tutorials but for parts that you don't really want to use tiny pieces of foam alternatively you can take a piece of fleece and line it over the parts to give it a smooth transition when taping it and if not fleece you can use a half inch piece of foam and then cut it down to size <laughs> That's how I make my fursuit head bases. As you can see, these two bases are completely different, but were made in the exact same way. I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and remember to comment, like, and subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Yeah.